Many years ago, this attorney, right before trial, tried to get a judge to shut down my website to try and prevent jurors from doing an internet search, thinking that by doing that, they'd find my website and information about malpractice cases. You want to learn what I thought and what actually happened in this medical malpractice case that almost made the front page of the New York Law Journal? Come join me on this walk along the beach as I share with you the answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Okay, I was handling a medical malpractice case that was getting to trial. And now, as we got closer and closer to trial, I had a good working relationship with my opponent, with my adversary. One month before we were scheduled to pick a jury in this case, I get a written request from my opponent asking the judge in our case to shut down my website, to shut it down for the duration of the entire trial. I'm reading this attorney's papers and I am getting angrier and angrier by the moment. I'm, steam is starting to pour out of my head, out of my ears. I could not believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe what I was reading. This attorney thought that as we went to trial, that as we went to jury selection, these jurors would disregard instructions from the judge who would say, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you are prohibited. You cannot do any independent research about the attorneys, about the parties to this case, or about what this case involves. You are not to do that. That means you cannot go online. You cannot do any search on your own. So this attorney says, I don't believe that these jurors are going to listen to the judge. And here's why. This guy thought that jurors would go ahead and do their own research and somehow find my website and then start searching through my website and find it to be so informative and so useful that now they're going to get information that's going to help them decide the issues in this case. And this attorney wanted it shut down. I called this lawyer up. I said, I can't believe what you just did. This is outrageous. I am furious. You want this trial stopped? You want this trial postponed for months? until the judge reaches a decision about whether or not he can shut down my website? I said, listen, this is my livelihood. I generate income from my website. People come to me from all across the country as a result of seeing information on my website. And I receive calls on a daily basis and emails from people who want more information to see whether or not they may have a valid basis for a case. If you try and shut down my website, I will now lose income. I will lose my livelihood. I was a solo practitioner at that time for many years. And this attorney didn't care. The only thing he cared about was shutting down my website for the duration of the trial, hoping and thinking that now, once he shut down my website, the jurors would be inoculated. They wouldn't care anymore because the only website he would be concerned about finding is that they would find my website. Never mind about every other lawyer's website in New York. What happened here is that I now had to put in papers that opposed this lawyer's request. I had to go into detail and explain to the court why this was an outrageous request, why it was a violation of my free speech, and also importantly, why shutting down my website would be a disservice, not just to me, but to every attorney in New York, because I argued that if he has to shut down my website, then certainly he has to shut down the defense lawyer's website. Then he has to shut down every other attorney's website who comes on for trial in this county, both plaintiff and defense. And that means that every website would be shut down for a duration of time when cases are on trial. So now we go before the judge's law clerk and we now argue this motion. A motion is a formal written request to the judge to take action. In this particular situation, the judge's law clerk heard arguments before we got to the judge. And the law clerk obviously is not tasked with making the final decision, but the law clerk was fascinated about the actual arguments being made. And I should tell you that this was occurring early on in the internet era, okay? There were not many attorneys who had a fully developed website. There were not many attorneys who had videos on their website. So this was a new and novel concept. And nobody, certainly nobody in New York, had ever made such a request to a judge before to actually shut down somebody's website where now they are representing themselves and holding them out to the world that this is what they do. And here's the information that will be helpful for you to learn about how these cases work. So now, after we make our argument to the law clerk, 
we then go in to see the judge. And now we have to make our arguments all over again. The defense attorney is making a very cogent argument explaining that if the jurors go ahead and disregard the court's instruction, now they'll find this information and they will be swayed. This is the word he used. They will be swayed by what they find on my website. Why will they be swayed? Not because I put information out on the website that is biased, but rather because of the amount of useful information that I have and the amount of information that I use to educate potential consumers and clients about how these cases work, the jury will be impressed with the information I have and start to lean in favor of me and my client. Could you imagine that? I am seething. I am angry. I am so upset with this attorney and what he is trying to do. Now, the judge listens to my argument. And by the time I am done, you know what the judge says? He says, you know, this is fascinating. There's no case law on this at all. I may just make a decision that in all likelihood is going to make the front page of the law journal. He's like, I'll have a decision within the next month. And we left the judge's chambers and I turned to my opponent. I said, I can't believe what you just did. I am outraged. I said, if the judge comes back with a decision against me, I'm going to appeal this and I will never ever work with you and I will never ever negotiate a case with you again. I was so upset with this attorney. This was ridiculous. So now, weeks go by, two weeks, three weeks go by. This is ridiculous. We still haven't gotten a decision and we are supposed to now pick a jury the following week. I called my opponent up and I said, listen, if the judge comes back with a decision and his decision is not favorable to me and postpones this trial, I will never, ever work with you again. I will never negotiate a case with you again. So here's my recommendation. I suspect that the judge is going to come out with a decision in the next few days because he told us he would. If the judge comes out with a decision that is not favorable to me, you can forget about negotiating this case. I will never settle it. We'll go to verdict and then you'll have to deal with any appeals that come from that. I said, this is your last chance. If you want to resolve this case right now, you have the opportunity over the next two days to go ahead and resolve this case and settle this case with me. Because if a decision comes out before we settle this case, forget about it. We're going to trial and now you deal with whatever verdict comes in. So what happened? Two days later, I received a call. He made a substantial settlement offer that my client accepted and we settled the case before the judge ever came out with a decision. Why do I share this with you? I share this with you because this is exactly what happened in a case that I handled in a medical malpractice matter many years ago where the defense attorney had the nerve to try and shut down my livelihood, shut down my website, believing this was in the best interests of his client, thinking somehow that number one, the jury would disregard the judge's instructions. Number two, they would find my information so overwhelmingly helpful to them that they would lean in favor of me and my client. And that was remarkable. Why do I share this with you? I share it with you because it's a beautiful day today here on the beach. My wife is out picking shells and I had a few minutes to open your eyes, hopefully, and teach you something about what occurred to me a number of years ago when one attorney decides, hey, you know what, counselor? I'm gonna shut down your website prior to trial. And I realize you're likely watching this video because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York and you're thinking about bringing a lawsuit, but haven't done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.